Hey YouTube, it's Dimitri, and today we're gonna to discuss the top 10 skills for risk management. Now these are all my opinions, but we're going to do a series of top 10 videos, and this is going to be the first one, so let's dive on in. Skill number one is communication, especially in English. So this is important for US banks. Um, everything we do is either technical or it's kind of theoretical, and so being able to explain in great detail exactly what you mean and how it's going to function and work is crucial. So even someone as myself who is a native English speaker, as many of my colleagues are not, um, even I have to struggle with trying to figure out how do I communicate to you or to someone else the topics that we're working with and really get my point across. Skill number two is databases and data warehouses. So working within like WinSCP, working in like SAS server, something where you have to move large files around and being able to do this efficiently is very, very important. It makes your job easier and more efficient because you actually know how to get the data moved around, uh, being able to log in, being able to change data sets. I know this sounds simple, but the reality is a lot of people just aren't very good at it, but it is a very good skill to have in risk management. And number three, tax onto the databasing, which is being able to use SQL or SQL, um, being able to actually manipulate data, pull it from data warehouses and get that extraction of exactly what you need is crucial. Um, I've seen people that have actually used SQL and they say, well, Dimitri, it is functional, meaning that it actually does what it's supposed to do. However, it is super inefficient and takes weeks to run. Yes, weeks. And so I can't emphasize this enough, but SQL is one of the most important skills, forest management, and data science in general. Number four is the big one, which is SaaS. Most banks use SaaS. It is great, it is amazing. There are some downsides to it. I've had my moments where I've loved SaaS. I've had moments where I've hated SaaS. But at the end of the day, SaaS is the number one used statistical programming language to do your analytical work. So SaaS is definitely a must. Number five, I'm going to call basic statistics, but in reality, needing to know logistic regression and OLS regression and how they work are very important for building basic models. Um, logistic regression within itself is typically used within credit modeling. OLS is used for other types of models and is the most basic principles behind statistical theory. And even those statistical theories used from OLS are applied to other scenarios, such as time series regressions, which we'll cover later. Number six is ARIMA and time series models. These are very important and going back to OLS assumptions, understanding OLS assumptions in time series and being able to build ARIMA style models, which includes autoregressive, moving average, ARMA, GARCH, ARCH, all those are generalized, in my opinion, to the basic time series models. You need these in risk management because you have to build time series models for CCAR and DFAST stress testing purposes. Seven is Excel, and yes, I know I hate on Excel a lot. I think it's a very basic tool used by a lot of business people. However, it is useful in risk management as well because a lot of times you do very computational exercises in SAS, R, or Python, and at the end of the day, you need to give it to a business manager who doesn't quite understand the program programming side and so they like to have things in Excel. It is also easy to prove to your manager and directors and senior management that it was done correctly because they can physically see the data in a software that they understand. Number eight is Word. Yes, Word processor, Microsoft Word, right? The one that we write all of our documents in. And I don't mean just being able to type out documents. What I'm talking about is being able to actually use all the functionalities, the rulers, the guidelines, the indentation, the formatting functions, the navigation screen. Being able to use all these functions in Word is crucial, crucial, because you have to be able to put all of your work into a document. It needs to look nice, it needs to be editable. Uh, you need to be able to use templates that other people build and build templates yourself to make the risk management process easy and functional. Number nine is gonna be kind of an odd one, but I'm going to say scorecard analysis. So I've worked in PPNR, I've worked in operational, and I've worked in credit risk. However, scorecard analysis, which is part of credit risk, I think is very, very interesting within itself. I think it has a lot of skills on how do you compact large million observation, 10 million observation data sets down into meaningful bins, buckets, categories, uh, buildings, gains tables, which is part of the scorecard model development and analysis. I think this is crucial for doing risk management. It really shows you all the different skills and perspectives from credit risk and how these can be applied to other types of risk, but I think it is very insightful to know this for risk management. And finally, number 10, which is R, 
I'm gonna say R slash Python. Uh, the reason being is most banks do use SaaS. A lot of banks are starting to be like hip tech companies and are moving from SaaS over to R, and I think R is more, most used. In my opinion, I think Python is 10 times better than R, but at the end of the day, a lot of people, even tech firms are using R because it's free, it's dynamic, it has a lot of libraries, you can do a lot with it. So number 10 I would say is learn to use R if you don't already know how to use it, or if you do know how to use it, try to get as good as you can because many banks are looking for people with R. Those are my top 10 most useful skills for risk management. Let me know what you think in the comments below. I'm sure I've missed a few or you think one is more important than others. They were by no means in any order, but those are my top 10 skills. Hit the subscribe button if you want more content like this, and don't forget to hit the little bell button next to the subscribe button if you want weekly notifications. Anyways, thanks for watching, and as always, until next time. Thanks for watching my video. If you find it helpful, please like, share, and subscribe.